Hello and welcome again to our Sakata vegetable production series where we tell you the A to Z of vegetables uh, from plant to harvest to help you make a success of your vegetable crop. Today we're talking tomatoes. How do you get to a tomato? Um, how does it work? Um, there's something called rootstocks and grafting and a few other things. Jan is going to tell us more. Jan, how are you doing? Fine yourself, Andre. No, good, good. good. Right, okay, tell me a little bit tomatoes. Um, it looks simple, it looks easy, uh, but anyone that's planted tomatoes will know that it's not. Yes. Where does it start? Okay, so I think um, to get to, we are fortunate here to stand in a, I would say a successful crop, but this took a lot of hard work and it all started from a single seed. Yep. Uh, now that's, uh, as a seed company, that's our business to provide the best quality seed available and varieties that's ad adaptable to various markets and then environments. And um, now you're talking basically like the seed that's in the tomato, you harvest those seeds and you uh, prepare them so that I can plant them at the end yes. of the day. So that yes. small little seed gives me this plant. Yes, yes. So th and th there's, there's a little bit of science behind it. It's not just the, the fruit that you've got in your hand there that we harvest the seed. It's a whole proce process of breeding. We've got uh, plants that we select as males and females. We make the crosses and basically we harvest that seed and then we, we take that seed. We make sure that it's disease free, the germination is perfect. Uh, so that at the end of the crop, you've got ma uh, value for money and a product that will end up like this. So talking of that then, okay. so. Is that the seed which you plant me, which you call, uh, which you plant then, and which a rootstock grows from it? No. Explain to me a little bit about that whole concept. Okay, just just quickly. Uh, I think we're going to have a, a later discussion on the rootstock specifically. But basically, uh, the the one thing that we have to remember for for tomatoes is in the whole breeding process, it's sometimes difficult to get the perfect variety. So that's where this whole uh, rootstock technology came in, is to have a variety where you can have perfect fruit uh, together with a perfect root system. Yep. A strong root system, all the disease resistance. Now to get that into one uh, plant is very difficult oh. uh, with the breeding. We cannot just incorporate all the genes into to one variety. So to make the process a little bit uh, simpler is that we focus on varieties for yield, quality, shelf life and appearance. And then we focus on what do you call the, the rootstocks. We focus then, we don't worry anything about what the fruit looks like. We just worry about, uh, do we have a, a strong, vigorous rootstocks with the necessary soil borne so disease So you're just resistance. worried about almost like the bottom half of the plant saying, okay, cool. Everything that's there and everything that's under the ground, that's what we're selecting for. Yes. And do you then take another plant which you say, okay, cool, now we're looking at fruit size and all of that, and now we're mixing these two together. So we're yes. getting the best of both worlds. Yes, so you, 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 uh, at the end, uh, it's a specialized nursery, they do it. Uh, not, not all the nurseries do it, and it's certainly not, not something that the farmer can, can uh, attempt lightly. It's, there's a lot of science behind it. Uh, but and, basically, and because your input costs on tomatoes yes. are very expensive, so yes. you don't want to be breeding a half plant that's yes. not going to work properly. Yes, but uh, the main thing is with the, the rootstocks, uh, maybe a, a variety like that that we, we do not, because we don't have to have to graft. Uh, this farmer grafts, but uh, it might end up costing you two rand a plant. With the grafting, it can go up to between seven and ten rand a plant. Oh, so then you, you must must also know uh, specifically, as I say, rootstock is not the answer for everyone, but for the specific conditions, uh, rootstock is definitely the option where you take then basically two plants. One was developed as a rootstock, the other one was developed as a scion, which is the, the above ground parts. And basically you, you make a cut in the plants, in both plants, and you take the scion, which is the, the fruit and the leaves and all of that, and you graft that on top of the, the root system. Uh, with a clip and when that fusion is, is, is nicely and properly done, all the vascular tissues align, then you get a nice healthy strong plant and you can get and a crop like this. And then you come and plant it, yeah, and then yes. you get maximum yield, best rootstock yes. at the end of the day. So you are renowned for your rootstocks. Um, Sakata has got very, very good rootstocks yes. at the end of the day. So if I were to go to a nursery, say, okay, cool, give me a, um, I want a grafted plant, 
but then I can ask them I want Cicata rootstocks. Yes, we are in the process. We've got one variety. Uh, I didn't choose it, but uh, we've got one variety here called Bowman, yep. uh, which was our first rootstock. Uh, and that was specifically developed for bacterial wilt resistance together with Fusarium race 3. Um, that is uh, one of the main reasons for grafting is, uh, especially on your disease side, is for the bacterial wilt resistance. Bacterial wilt is a, is a very difficult disease to breed for if you want high quality, high yielding, good shelf life varieties. It's difficult to breed that into your sign. So that's why we use the rootstocks. Uh, and then we get the best of both worlds. The other reason for the grafting would be for very long cycle crops. Uh, there we, we don't necessarily look at bacterial wilt resistance. There we look at Fusarium race 3 and nematode and then vigor. But that is crops that can uh, be harvested for a full year. Uh, where this, for instance, this is a crop, but this is what we call a short cycle crop. Yep. So we will grow up to the wire, we will top it and then finish. Uh, but if the, the farmer, for instance, did not have a rootstock with the resistance, he would not be able to utilize these uh, uh, net houses again because the, the soil is infected. Uh, and if you plant a normal plant that's ungrafted here, you will basically reach your first cluster and then the plant will die. Here on the rootstock, as you can see, in bacterial wilt infected fields, we've got very nice high production that we can sustain. And what's the difference then uh, if I just plant a seed? and I just leave it to grow. Then I will still have tomatoes to an extent, but I will not get the best of both worlds, am I correct? Yes, but that's, as I say, there's, there's, um, we have to distinguish between your normal tomato production, which is still, I would consider 90% of the market in South Africa, yep. is still your conventional plants, where you will take a seed, uh, a single seed, you will take it to a nursery, or you can try it yourself, but take it to a nursery, they know what they're doing, it's their business, take it to a nursery, they germinate the plant, uh, make a seedling for you and you take that seedling, transplant it in the soil and then uh, you allow that plant to grow. Um, it's only in very specific situations where we would, uh, if we cannot rotate or we don't have uh, fields that's not infected uh, or we've got net houses like this, uh, where we would go then to grafting uh, yep. for specific reasons, we've got it here, uh, we've got the disease in the soil, but we want to continue with tomato production. Then it makes sense to, to go for the grafting. Otherwise, single seed, a seedling, you transplant it. And if you don't have bacteria world or anything like that, you can end up with a single seed, you can have the same results. But not if there's bacteria world in the soil. Awesome. Right, so hopefully now you know when you should graft and not. Um, it's uh, one of those... It will maybe give you, as he says, in extreme circumstances, that extra 10% um, or just protect you against some of the, uh, the things that nature can, can throw your way. Um, but very, very specific science. So if you're not sure, make sure you get the right seed from them <laughs> and um, uh, then you can just grow your tomato plant out so make sure you um, watch out for all our other vegetable production series videos specifically on tomatoes we're going to be talking a lot about tomatoes uh, in every single facet of it and um, make sure that you can make a success of your crop if you've got any questions comment below and uh, we'll also put a link up on top or below depending on where you're watching and then you can get in contact with Sakata. till next time cheers thanks Bye.